All right, here's video two of our Malibu series. 04 Malibu. This will probably work on a lot of other cars too. So on this one, we're just going to go ahead and take the two bolts out of the back because we know from the passenger side that we did yesterday, that's going to be the uh, appropriate course of action. This side, we have to take the motor, the transmission mount out. So that's so we can get to that bolt in the back. So, and then we got our pinch bolt down the bottom. So we're going to get started on that and then, uh, see if we can get this done. All right, so I already got the, the bolts and the nuts loose on the mount. I've got the uh, pinch bolt out for the ball joint. We need to go ahead and get that loosened up. And then we need to get the back bolt loosened up to where this thing will drop down after we get, the, uh, get it loosened up. So let me go grab an 18 wrench because that's what this is on the front. This is an 18 and then the back bolt, I think it's either 13 or 14. And then I'll be right back and we can go ahead and get this broke loose. All right, we're gonna use our same wrench we did yesterday on the other side. We're gonna see if we can get this thing to come loose. It should be, if you pull up on it on this side, it should come off. There it comes. Get it broke loose. There it goes. There we go. Get this side loose and then we got to get the other side loose and then we'll smack on it, knock it down and then it'll be out and ready to go. So if I recall from yesterday's adventure, this was either a 13 or a 14 on the back bolt, which is back here. I don't know if you can see it. It's a 13 because I just tried it. That's wonderful. If we can do that, then we can get my ratchet in there. Notice I, this time around, I moved my jack further back, so it's not in the way this time like it was on the other side. As soon as I quit playing musical rat, musical sockets with my sockets here, we can get this loosened up. There we go, push down on this side. Which makes sense because the other bolt faces the other way so you gotta pull up on it. That makes sense. All right, so we can do what we did on the other one where we, uh, we'll set you right here. We'll aim you down like we did on the other side and you can watch the uh, ball joint fall out. We can try to smack it out with the hammer first but I don't think I got any room to hit so we're gonna just do it with the uh, good old-fashioned tuning fork or as most people call it a pickle fork Okay, in normal circumstances, you should never have to touch the center nut in the hub for your axle. However, because this car has already proven to be a Malapu, that's why I call it that, we're going to loosen the nut up on the axle shaft so that this whole strut assembly can move. Thus, preventing the axle from coming out if the thing wants to go sideways after the lower control arm comes out. We're not going to take the nut off. We're just going to loosen it to where this whole thing has room to move around. So that's what we're going to do here. That should be good enough. We don't want to loose, take the nut off. We just want to loosen it to where this thing's got some play in it. Then when we're done, we'll tighten it back up. Pretty simple. All right, so we got to finish getting this out of here. I might have to move the camera out of there so I can beat on it. 
Let me move you guys out here for just a second. You can kind of see where we're at because I'm going to be in here beating on this thing. I gotta... Let's go ahead and get our mount loosened up over here. We got to take transmission mount off. So what we'll end up doing is we'll end up pulling the transmission mount. I'll get that sent out bolt out. And then I'll take this back bolt out. And uh, well actually. Well let me see. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But we'll get it out of here one way or another. Especially because this thing wants to be a pain in the neck. Sometimes you can get on it on the bottom here once you got a little bit of space on it. Pop it back up and then smack it back down. So I'll be right back. I'm going to finish this up and then we'll start taking this mount loose. All right, we got it out. Had to put the pickle fork in from the front and then holding down on it, smack up top of the pickle fork and it pushes it right out. So we got to control our mount right here. So now we can get these uh, this mount off. So those are 15 millimeter nuts on the top of that. So we'll get in there and we'll do this with it. This one you got to use a deep little socket to get it started. I'm gonna take those nuts off. And then we got to get on the bottom, get the two bolts out of the bottom of the mount, and then we can jack the engine up. So one bolt's over here on this side. And there's that one. And you got to do this side same way. And get your bolts out. Now we got to jack the engine up to where we can get that mount out. It's a little different than on the other side because this side I think we actually have to pull the mount completely out. That's why I loosened up the nut on the uh, axle shaft because I found out through looking at the footage from the other side that as we jacked up the motor it was pulling on that shaft so I don't want it pulling on the shaft again so that's why I loosened up the nut on the CV. Now yours may or may not do the same thing but if you notice something funny going on when you're jacking the engine up to change out this control arm, loosen that center axle nut. And you don't have to take it out very far, just enough to where if the engine lifts up, it starts pulling the axle shaft with it. You've got plenty of space here, so you'll be fine. Now we just got to jack the engine up. So it's unlike on the other side, we can't get the engine up high enough to get the mount out. So what we may have to do is take these three bolts out. I think those are 18s. Nope, I think they're going to be 16 or 17. Nope, they're 15. They are 15 mm. There's my 16 mm. Nope. Well, okay, we'll go ahead and pop those three brace bolts out. We got the engine supported on a jack stand or on a jack so it's not going anywhere. Yeah, these are brace bolts. We had to pull the brace bolts out to lift up the uh, get the mount out, so let's do that real quick. So this is what I was afraid of right here. Make sure we're on backwards. Set those to the side. And then we'll put that mount back on when we're done. I'm gonna take this brace off. This is the added step that you don't have to do on the other side. This is why we're filming this side. Because there's extra parts you have to take off to get control arm mounts. And we pick this brace up and set this brace to the side pick this mount up set this mount to the side like that 
now we can get in there with our 18 millimeter socket and our uh, electric ratchet and we can zip that bolt out something we couldn't do on the other side because we had too much stuff in the way so let me find the right size extension set for this if we're going to need some extensions we'll get in there we'll get in there and we'll get that front bolt taken out and then we'll take the back bolt out and then we'll pull this out and then change the bushing on the back like we did on the other side get in here like this pull the bolt back out see that's why we do this take your trim tool stick it inside this little space right here and pull your bolt out see just like that just like that and your bolt comes out Oh, that one ready is ready to fall out so we're putting all of our we're grouping all of our bolts up so we know where they came from and then we'll go ahead and get this back bolt off this piece back here and then we'll work on getting these uh, bolts out of the back While we've got this apart, because we have extra space now, we're going to knock out the sway bar link. Because I learned from the other side that you need all the room you can get. So we're going to pull this lower control arm and get it out of here. And then before we put the control arm in, we're going to take the sway bar link out. And then that way, we can change the sway bar link. At the same time, we're doing the control arm. And that's how you do it. The other side came apart pretty easy after I turned off the camera. All right, here's our back bolt. We'll set that to the side. And we'll grab our control arm, which you can see over here in the corner. Go ahead and we'll grab it and just kind of Well, we could do it the other way. I think those were 18s. We can go ahead and take the bolts out and pull the whole thing out as an assembly. And I'll show you how we do that. Take your wrench, put it on the back, get it locked in. Grab your impact with your 18 millimeter uh, socket on the end of it. Our two nuts sit up here and here. I'm gonna take and put my wrench on the nut and then zip the bolts out with the impact. Pretty simple stuff. So we're gonna take our first nut, make sure we got our wrench on it. Knock you around a little bit because you know, that's just what we do here. You wanna hold your wrench down when you go after your bolt here. And there it is, there's one. There's the bolt, that was easy. We'll set that over here with the rest of our front end bolts. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Take your nut. Now, if you have a straight wrench, I think I mentioned this in the first video, if you have a straight wrench, this works better, but if you have just a offset wrench like this, you can hold it up like that with one hand, like what I'm about to do here, and then take your other hand on your gun, put it down here on the bolt and zip it out. See that? Takes it right out. Piece of cake.
two seconds, we're done. While we're here, we can grab our control arm, pull it out like that, set it off to the side because we're not reusing it. There, now, since we're here, we got to go after this little guy right here, which is also an 18 millimeter. And this little guy likes to be a pain. So what I'm gonna try to do, is I'm gonna try to get a swivel socket on it, get up in here and break him loose. Cause the top one, that guy right there, he's usually pretty easy to get off. This bottom one, I fought on the other side for a good hour to try to get that one off of there. But I have a swivel socket right here, or a swivel, so I can get up in there with the gun. And if we're lucky, we can get that off of there and then we don't have to worry about it no more. All right, we gotta get him up in there to where he's gonna be happy. So this is how we do plan B. This is how you keep from breaking your tools. Take your ratchet, get it on there. And as soon as you get it broke loose, which it will break loose, then you can get it out with your electric ratchet. Sometimes you gotta put your foot on it. Ugh, that one don't wanna come loose. The other side was nearly this bad. grab on it and pull down on the other side too. There's another trick you can do when you go to get these loose. You take your, your pry bar and you wedge it between two surfaces like I'm gonna move my ratchet down a little bit so I can kind of get it on here. All right, you take your ratchet, you get it on the, you gotta get it down low enough to where you can get it to break loose. So, what I'll do is I'll take my pry bar and I'll put it up against like the brace for the control arm and I'll put it up on the handle where the grooves are and I'll pull down on it like this. And what that's doing is that's doing the same thing that the impact would do, except you're doing it manually. Uh, and it will work or it won't. In this case, I think it's working. Because I've seen, seen the nut move. Or we can do it this way too. Put it on the bottom of the control arm brace and then pry down on it and there it is it came loose and then when you get it loose enough to where you can turn it with the ratchet you can get it get on it with the electric ratchet and you can get it to spin off without it getting jammed and you having to do a bunch of stuff on it so and there's that one Now the other thing you want to do is these are greasable. So you want to pay attention to what direction the greasable fitting fits in. So we're going to pull you back so you can see the upper one. Upper one's the easiest one to get because it's right there. So we're going to bust that out real quick. At least it should be real quick if it goes together. Well, I hope it does. Now right, let's get the uh, 18 deep in there we got a little bit further to go on this one so let's get the 18 deep in there all right here we go there it is piece of cake and then you take the sway bar link off doesn't matter how it comes off just as long as you get it back on take that and set it over here on your discard pile and now we're going to put the sway bar link on and then we're going to do the control arm and then we'll be done with that part so let me go get the control get the pieces together and i'll be right back so here are the part numbers used in this video we have a k80252 which is our sway bar end link 
and our 5CB50082, which is our control arm. And like I mentioned in the first video, this kit's supposed to have a bolt that goes with it that's part of the steering knuckle because in service information, you're supposed to throw that bolt away, but it does not. And I think it comes already set up with the grease fitting. So we got that going for us. On the end link, if I can get it out of the box, get it out of the box here, I'll show this to you. It's got grease fittings on the sides. We gotta open it up so we can get into it here. And it's got our good old friend, the nylock nut. And on the sides here, you got a grease fitting here and a grease fitting here. And on this car, the bottom grease fitting faces to the rear. So that means the upper grease fitting is hidden by the shock or the strut. So what I like to do is I like to put these together prior to installation. So I think these are eight millimeter Zerk fittings. Spin them down as far as you can by hand. When you can't do it by hand anymore, then you can use a socket on it. Same thing on this side. So I'll go grab a socket real quick. Let's see what size are these? I've got a seven and an eight here. Well, it's not the seven. So I do believe it's gonna be the eight. Yes, indeed it is. So we'll just take our tool here. Tighten them up till you stop. Don't go any further, you'll snap them off. And that's it right there. So that's all done. Now these nylocks should be the exact same size nut that came off the car, at least the other side was, 18 millimeter. So no greasing, no Loctite, no nothing on these, okay? We're good to go. So I will get back over to the get the tools over there or get the parts over there and let's finish this up well look what I found in the bag underneath our replacement nut and bolt for the spindle which is great because uh, the other one didn't have it so this kit had it we got to loosen up this uh, let me show you what we're doing here we got to loosen this up because we got to allow this to swivel so we gotta loosen this up, which we're probably gonna have to use our uh, tool on here. So let me get my 14 socket in here. I'll turn this to off. Should be already be on off. I gotta loosen this up real quick. Come on. All right, we'll put the big gun on it then. Gotta loosen this nut up so this thing floats. Otherwise, it's a bear to put back in. We gotta have this float so that when it goes back in, it goes in easy. Plus, we have to adjust this at ride height. So if we have this thing in there tight, we can't get it back in the control arm. Alternatively, we can't adjust it properly. So we gotta, what they call prep your gear here. We can, we can put a little bit of tension on it though to keep it from falling off. So next step we gotta do is we gotta put it back in the car. But before we do that, we need to put our sway bar link in. So we got our sway bar link. All right, so on the old one, it went like that. So I'll zoom you back as far as I can go with you. So you can see how this goes together. And I got our sway bar link. Make sure it's to the inside of the ABS wire, just like the other one came off. You might have to rotate it a few times to get it in here. Make sure that your bottom goes in first, then you can push down on the sway bar. And as you push down on the sway bar, you can get the top part in. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten the bottom bolt down. So these are 19 millimeter, the new ones. 
If you don't have a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch socket, we'll do the same thing. Matter of fact, let me show you. So we'll take our 18 off, grab our three quarter socket, which is right here. We'll put that on. This drives the internet nuts when I do this. So using SA sockets on metric tools, not like it's never been done before. Ow. And then you wanna, there's a torque value, but I don't torque it. I just tighten it down best I can. So I'll get in there with my ratchet here and we'll pull on it. And it's tight enough. It ain't going nowhere. Then we'll get up here on this one. And no, we're not gonna hit this with the uh, impact. As much as everybody's screaming, hit it with the impact. No, we're not hitting it with the impact. That's how you break stuff. We're trying to get the car out of our shop, not prolong its stay here. So we want to get it done and out of here so we can move on to the next one. Now you see why I go slow, because I don't want to get hit. my hand smacked again by this thing. That hurts, by the way. That's nice and tight. So our sway bar link's on, now let's get our control arm on. So since we got all the bolts out, we just gotta line it back up into the mounts, which is a little easier said than done, apparently. All right, so let's go ahead and get our front bolt in, which I think is this one here. Feed it through the hole, find your bracket hole, line this up and stuff it through and then that side's in and then we got to put our bolts on the back and there's a trick that i use to get the bolts in the back what i do is i stuff my bolts well this side i'm going to stuff the bolts through and then try to put the nut on top of it and spin it together largely in part to the fact i can't see going on back here because it's getting dark out i want to make sure i get this thing lined up ever so perfect pull back in. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my bolts started but I'm not tightening them up until I get that lower control arm mounted to the spindle mainly because of the problem that I had on the other side I'm going to leave it loose until I get everything where I want it to be. Then once that's done, then I'll go back through and tighten all my bolts up. I'll put my mount back on. And then the only thing I got left to do to this and make sure that we're still loose. Yeah, we're through on the other side too. So the only thing I'll have to do is the control the tie rod end and then we'll be good to go now see I left it loose and so I got movement here so in the event that we did have a problem we got it taken care of so now we need to put our ball joint up into our control arm into our knuckle and you got to just kind of arrange that around a little bit and pop that up in there like that and then you can smack it in place with a hammer so that's how they recommend you do it in service information put some PB Blaster on it to ease an installation, you can definitely do that. Matter of fact, I would highly encourage that. Make a small puddle of poo at the bottom of the two while you're at it. Try not to break your grease fitting. Look at that, it's in. Now we gotta take our new bolt 
I apologize for the light. I wish I had some light, better light out here, but it is getting dark. I do have to go get my uh, portable light set up so I can finish this. All right, so the bolt goes through this way. Your nut goes on that way, or you could do it this way, whichever way makes you happy. Verify this is the same size as what came out. This is a 15 millimeter bolt that came out and it is not a 15 millimeter bolt so it's going to be a 16 so we got our 16 right there we're good to go now this has loctite on the inside it's green loctite which is what you'd find from the dealer so you want to make sure that you get this all the way through and then you want to have your 16 socket on one side and a breaker bar with a 16 socket on the other side you want to drive this puppy home so let me find my sockets that I need for this let me see I think on the other side it was 5 8 which is what the same thing was let me see because I had a 16 on one side and a 5 8 on the other so we got our 5 8 for the one side which we're going to put on our breaker bar And we're going to take a 16 socket out of the toolbox here. Make sure that you got your nut on. Get it down to where you can't turn it no more. All right. And then we're going to put our breaker bar on the bolt side. We're going to put our socket on the nut side for the impact gun. And we're going to zip it down. Now these are supposed to torque to 37 degree, 37 foot pounds plus 90 degrees, but I am not doing that. There's Loctite in here, so you don't have to worry about it. But you should do that if you're doing this as a precautionary measure. And you hold it still and you tighten it up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the uh, big blue ratchet. And we're going to tighten it down because we got our breaker bar on one side so we can go ahead and put a little bit of extra torque on it and we're going to tighten this bolt down all right we got that done all right so now we can go ahead with our 18 get in the back there and we're going to take our ratchet with our deep 18 socket on it and I'm going to punch it back here. You can't see this. Let me go get some light so you can see. I'll be right back. And we got to put our, I think it's our 13 or 14 on the back. We got to tighten that back one up, but we're going to do that with a wrench because uh, it's pretty easy to do. And then we got to get back here and we got to finish tightening up these two bolts back here. So I need to get my... 18th socket on the end of my gun and run those in real quick so let's find our deep 18 that we just threw in our toolbox put it on one side and then we'll take our wrench and we'll put it on the other side you can kind of see what we're doing over here we're over here working on this part over here I know you can't see for anything but I'm going to do my best. Alright, so we'll take that off of there. We'll put it on our blue ratchet and we'll tighten it up with the blue ratchet. Alright, that one's tight. Take our wrench off and put it on the other side. Now this one, because it sits outside the sway bar, I like to put it out here on the outside part of the sway bar. And then that way, it holds the bolt straight and it doesn't try to uh, round off the corners of the nut. So then we'll grab it like that, we'll lift up on it so it holds it in place and we'll tighten it up. And then we'll put our ratchet on it and then the back bolts will be done. Then we can put the uh, transmission mount back in. All right, back's in, tightened up, front's in, tightened up. 
let's get that uh, let's get that mount put back together here so we'll turn our light on over here that way you can see what we're doing all right so the mount goes in same way it came out so you want to set it straight down like that you don't want to put the bolts in it until well I think we can put the bolts in it now because of the way it's made so the bolts for that they look like this they got the rounded tip on the end of them you'll have two of them you got to find the right ones though because these had some rust on the end okay these are the two that we need to put in the mount so one goes in this corner over here you can pick the mount up and you just kind of move it to the side don't tighten these bolts up just get them in the holes hole but don't tighten them up and then we want to put the mount on next the mount goes like this now you can set it down on there to get it lined up you're going to have three bolts that look the same the three bolts that look the same they're going to have that rounded end on them just like the bottom mount bolts do so without putting the nuts on the mount yet you're going to take your hand Slide it through back like this and pick up on this mount and put the top bolt in. And if you're really good, you can put the bolts back in the exact same hole they came out of. Like this black bolt right here came out of this hole over here. Don't tighten these up till you get them all in and then you can go through. Because you're going to have to make sure that all the mounts are in good all the bolts are in the right spot when you put this together if it gives you any type of resistance going in because you're going into an aluminum housing you need to back up and start over make sure you can wiggle it back and forth while you're doing this and I think those were 18s I think those were 18s or no they were 15s I'm sorry they were 15s so I think that's our 15 socket Nope, it's our 16 socket. So we can go ahead and put these in with the uh, electric ratchet. These you can go ahead and tighten up now. So if you want to go ahead and get these tightened up now, you can. Make sure they're tight. So we'll get in here and we'll tighten this one up. And it feels like it should be a 15. So we're going to swap out to our deep 15 socket, which is right here. The 16 is good for getting it down, but don't try to tighten it with the 16 because you're not going to get anywhere with it. This piece of plastic keeps getting in my way, so we're going to pull this back and get in there with my socket tighten this up all right I'll get up here and we'll get this top one done if you have really long extensions like I do they're they're probably invaluable in this point especially because you can't really get back in there very well unless you have them I just don't like getting crazy with my extensions sometimes you have to though especially on a job like this get up in here and you tighten this one down And then we get this one tightened down. All right, and then we can let the jack down, which will lower the engine back down onto the mount. And we put our bolts in our mount. We're almost done, because after we get the bolts in the mount, I got to put a couple push, a uh, couple clips back in there. We got to get our nuts tightened up. We got to get our bolts tightened up. Then we're done with this video. So if you can get your two nuts the two nuts that go on this they have this uh, extra long uh, washer on the end you can get some thread started on it with the engine up as high as it is but don't try to tighten these up with the engine still on a jack though because you're going to come across a really big problem if you do 
So let me let the engine down and we'll tighten up our mount and then we'll call it done for this video because the rest of it, all you have to do is tighten up the axle shaft nut on the front of the hub. And then we got all of our mounts bolts tightened up. Put some grease in that ball joint. About six pumps should do the trick depending on how your grease gun works. So yeah, we're just about done here. Are you? it for me so we're gonna be calling this done here in about a minute make sure you get these nice and tight on this mount if you don't you'll start getting this noise when you go to take off because you'll be allowing this mount to move this mount looks like it needs to be replaced mainly because of all this garbage down here on the bottom of it but it still works and I am not I have not been instructed to replace it, so I am not doing it. So I only do as I'm instructed. All right, that one's done. And of course, with any time you mess with front end components, you wanna get an appointment with your local alignment shop, have the front end alignment checked and adjusted if necessary, especially if you're doing control arm because of the caster camber angle. Uh, sway bar link you don't have to because sway bar link just has to do with roll. Uh, uh, the tie rod end you definitely have to because that affects your toe. And you don't want to have a bad toe. But then you start wearing your tires out. So we're done with this part so we can go ahead and put our two push pins back in here that came out. goes in there and then that one goes in there and we're done with this video I'm not going to film tie rod end because if you want to watch tie rod end go to my uh, project mom's car our O2 Grand Am video where I did both left and right on that car it's the same process exactly the same process I will even show it to you see there's your there it is right there in all of its busted glory yep I take a tool to it, pop that out, get that nut loose. It's a 21 millimeter nut. That spins off pretty easy. If you have to hold it back here on the back, there's a 13 millimeter spot back here for your wrench. This up here is a 12. And then you can use that to break it loose. And so that's all there is for the ball, uh, tie rod end. So we gotta tighten that nut back up because it wouldn't be appropriate for me to leave you guys without that nut getting tightened back up. So let me find my socket for that. We did that because the other side came apart. So we wanted to make sure we didn't have another come apart. I'll go ahead and tighten that back down. I'm sure we'll see it again on the channel so always go back over make sure all your bolts are tight before you end your job you've got grease fittings up here and then down here on your sway bar link and I did it backwards but it's okay because we can always make it work so thanks for watching make sure you like and send it to your people and get some subscribers coming in we're working on merchandise so stay tuned we'll have something one of these days and uh, we'll see you on the next one.